whether we sell conveyors, whether we build conveyors, make conveyors, use or work on conveyors, they have problems. And what I want to hopefully discover today is some of the five biggest problems that users face when they're not or things are missed during design, build, upgrades, or those early stages of conveyors. So let's get into it. All right, number three, insufficient ceiling distance. Gang, keep in mind, we're working from worst to the, the, the least significant to the most significant problem. And number three, insufficient belt ceiling. That's really starting to get to be more and more problematic. Uh, here's what we're re referring to when we talk about insufficient um, ceiling distance. And that's the edge distance from the belt. So if you look at this photograph, you can see the shoot wall here vertically, and you can see the edge of the belt. The What I'm talking about is this distance right here, the distance from that skirt board to the edge of the belt. Now, keep this in mind throughout this discussion. This belt's going to track a little bit from side to side. Hopefully, it's not going to track significantly poorly, but it may. And it'll probably move a little bit from side to side. That's one of those things that we just have to deal with as conveyor operators that our belts tend to mistrack. So what I look in the, as I look in this photo, I can see my edge, edge distance, this free belt edge, as we call it, is X. But as I'm running this conveyor and it wears weighs from side to side, that distance might be anywhere between X and Y. It's going to vary a little bit. So SEMA has a formula that tells you how much free edge belt you would need. And that formula, it's on, it's in SEMA 7. It's uh, the free belt edge equals 0 0.055 times the belt width plus 0 0.09. The problem with that formula is that it only provides usually a couple of inches of free belt edge, like you see in this photo. Most facilities are dealing with dust problems. One of the ways that they're dealing with dust problems is they're making, uh, they're buying improved, better, what we call double lipped skirting. Okay, they're not using what you see in this photo. What you see in this photo tends to not do the job with the amount of dust that's acceptable at some of these plants. So they need to use a more heavy duty skirting. Those heavy duty skirtings are usually much wider than that two inches that that SEMA design standard states. They're usually about three inches to four inches. So that's what you're seeing in this photo. If you look in this photo, this free belt edge on, on you look at the bottom left of your screen, you can see that there's uh, about three or four inches that skirting sits on there very nicely. If that belt were to mistrack a bit, it's going to allow for that. If you look at the diagram on the right, that's going to kind of show you how those double lipped, more real estate um, is needed for those double lip skirting. I want to share this with you real quick here. Um, this is a this is a chart, and this tells you uh, kind of what the shoot work width should be depending on the belt width and the trough angle. So if we take a 36 inch belt, we're gonna trough to 35 degrees. We've actually narrowed that belt up to 31.7 inches once we've troughed it. That means the shoot work should only be 24 inches in width, and that's gonna allow enough free belt edge. 